This episode of Destructoid is brought to you by Netflix. Coming up on Destructoid, Black Ops 2 shows off the zombies. Assassin's Creed Liberation is AC in your pants because it's on the Vita and TSN is offering big games digitally on day one. All that and more right now on Destructoid. Welcome to Destructoid, I'm Tara Long. And I'm Max Scoville. Happy Wednesday, Max. Happy Wednesday, Tara. Lot going on today, huh? Is there? We're, yeah. We're busy with things. I know, it's a busy week. Secret Monday things. was busy, today is busy. Things we got the last juicy morsel of Black Ops 2 footage. Oh, it's I finally know about been that. revealed. Tell us about uh, that. Activision released their debut trailer for the zombies mode today. Uh, and it starts out a lot like the last trailer from last week, uh, but thankfully this one has more than two seconds of gameplay in it. To clarify, that gameplay is about two straight minutes of zombies climbing onto buses and being shot in the head and lit on fire in various ways. All set to some really bitchin' guitar riffs, courtesy of a band named Avenged Sevenfold. See, I know things other than raps. I bet teenagers sure are excited about this game. <laughs> Uh, Destructoid's Hamza Aziz got to play around with the zombies recently and he was surprised to learn that the biggest change they're bringing is not a bigger world or four new characters or some new fangled gun type, but a full campaign with an actual story. Please, Max and audience, hold your cynicism until I finish and then you can leave whatever mean comments you want to. The campaign is called Transit with a Z and turns out that bus from the trailer actually plays a pretty big role Anywhere from one to four players will be able to board the bus together and travel from map to map while killing zombies. You'll also be able to travel on foot if you're scared of driving or you've had too much to drink, I guess. And the game will present you with new challenges and rewards depending on which you choose. There's also gonna be a survival mode, which will have a lot of the same maps from the transit mode, but reconfigured for wave-based gameplay. That's also gonna support up to four players, and of course you'll be able to repeat those maps as many times as you want without you know, being forced to progress like in the campaign. On top of that, there's also a grief mode, or as Treyarch is calling it, 4Z4, which is basically the same thing as survival mode, except there's two teams of human players, so up to eight players competing against each other and taking on zombies at the same time. So you won't be able to hurt or shoot the other team in any way, but there will apparently be some exclusive mechanics that you can use to screw the other team over, and then the winner is just whichever team is left standing. So, sounds pretty fun. They're also bringing back custom games, so you'll be able to control the different parameters or matches, or you can start on a specific wave if you want, and the game will adjust your points accordingly. Um, other changes they're making include improved matchmaking and stat tracking. They're adding uh, map and mode specific leaderboards and new zombie types, new characters with dialogue, and of course, new weapons. According to Hamza, players will be able to scavenge the world for parts and then use those parts to build crazy futuristic weapons to obliterate zombies with, so that's always fun. They didn't actually show any kinds of weapons per se, but if you guys want more info, feel free to check out Hamza's full written preview over on destructoid.com. We made up, so we're not in the fire anymore. Good, I, I don't- Not I, the sexy way, that's not okay. what I meant. I get it, because you're fighting with Hamza. Mm -hmm. I wonder if you get to use little helicopters to kill the zombies. Uh, I don't think so. I didn't see any I of that in the trailer. I hope so. I don't know. I really hope Perhaps. so. Perhaps. Anyway, with the steady flow of sequels we see coming down the video game pipeline, one of the questions that we gamers frequently ask each other is, should I play the earlier games first? And probably the biggest game posing that question this year is Assassin's Creed 3, which is technically the fifth game in the Assassin's Creed series. But because of this, a lot of people who were previously uninterested in the series are suddenly interested and they're like, what should I do? I don't know what to do. Sure. Uh, well, if you're one of these people, Good news, sort of. Uh, Ubisoft has announced that they're putting out an Assassin's Creed collection this year. It is called Assassin's Creed The Ezio Trilogy, and it collects the As Assassin's Creed 2, all of its DLC, and its two sequels, Brotherhood and Revelations. Now, since this is the Ezio Trilogy, the first game isn't included because that had Altair. But from what I've gathered, Assassin's Creed 2 and Brotherhood are really the ones that are most worth playing. I've been dabbling around in Brotherhood myself. Now, it's great to see, uh, it's great at Ubisoft to release this game to get people really excited about their big sequel. Unfortunately, Assassin's Creed, the Ezio Trilogy, is being released on November 13th, which is two weeks after Assassin's Creed 3 comes out. So if you're trying to do catch up there, it's 
not quite going to work. Also, it's a PlayStation exclusive, so that's kind of a bummer. On the bright side, all the games are on one disc, and they have the very fair price of $39.99, which is $40 bucks for three very large games and a pile of DLC, mm. so that's not too bad. While we're on the subject of collections, now is a good time to mention that BioWare is releasing the Mass Effect trilogy for PS3, PC, and 360 this fall. As you might have suspected from the word trilogy, this collects Mass Effect 1 through 3, which is uh, notable since the, uh, the first game was never actually released on PlayStation. The trilogy is going to be hitting 360 and PC on November 6th with a, P uh, with a PS3 version to follow sometime soon after. For PS3 owners who already have the second two games, worry not, Mass Effect 1 will be available as a standard PSN download. And, uh, a download, yeah, you say? Yeah, pretty cool. Maybe we'll talk about downloading things. Yeah, digital distribution, man. It's yeah. the future. Speaking of the future, apparently it's filled with Wii U's. GameStop has reportedly shut off pre-orders for this system due to overwhelming demand, which could mean a couple things. Uh, could mean that 10 million people have pre-ordered one, or it could mean that 1 million have pre-ordered one and they just didn't make enough systems to meet demand. And actually, I heard a rumor that there's going to be very few systems available on launch day because uh, apparently there was some problem with the manufacturing of the touch screen. I don't know. That's just a rumor. Whether it's true or not remains to be seen. But if you are a GameStop Power Up Rewards member, which is a paying service, you'll still be able to add your name to the waiting list at your local store. Or you can try pre-ordering from somewhere else. Uh, Toys R Us has this version, which is 420 $420 and uh, comes bundled with the Arkham City Armored Edition and Scribble Knots Unlimited. So, I guess if you were planning on getting those games anyway. And if you're still on the fence about getting a Wii U, Nintendo has finally released their launch day lineup for North America, which contains 23 games. And I am sad to report Max does not include Funky Barn. Uh, I know you were really excited about Funky Barn. What wanted Funky Barn. Um, it is included in the launch window, however, that's going to be between November 18th and March 31st, 2013. So that time period is going to add 29 more games to the roster, including some big ones like Mass Effect 3, Aliens Colonial Marines, uh, Pikmin 3, Rayman Legends is going to be in there, a bunch more. Um, and then games that will be available on day one include two first party titles, surprisingly not many, uh, New Super Mario Bros. U and Nintendo Land. Oh boy. You can even call that a game. <laughs> um, as well as a bunch of third party stuff. There's Black Ops 2, Assassin's Creed 3, Darksiders 2, Zombie U. I'm not going to name all 23 of them, but you guys can check out the full list on Destructoid.com. It's all getting so real now, Max. Yeah. It's almost here. Yeah, that it's must like be less than two months away. Must be, I think it's. I think they really wasted an opportunity by not say, putting the Mass Effect trilogy out on Wii U, because that would be like, yeah. hey, it's a complete thing instead of just the third part. Now, uh, we also mentioned Assassin's Creed 3 there. On Monday, I talked about how cool that game is because it has Benjamin Franklin and tomahawks and raccoons in it and how I played it last week, but I didn't get a chance to mention that I also played Assassin's Creed Liberation, which is the totally separate, unique PlayStation Vita version. With a woman. Yes, a lady. In Liberation, you play as Aveline, who's a wealthy French-African debutante and also an assassin. Uh, the game takes place in New Orleans between 1765 and 1780, which is sort of the end of the French and Indian War through the beginning of the American Revolution. In terms of story and how it ties into the whole Assassin's Creed universe, that's a little bit unclear, but we do know that uh, Aveline's going to cross paths with Connor at some point, and apparently if you have Assassin's Creed 3 on the PS3, you get to you get to play as him in the Vita version? Yeah. I think that's a thing. Liberation feels um, simultaneously really similar to Assassin's Creed 3, or just Assassin's Creed in general, but at the same time, it is a totally new game. This is not like they took like some assets and scaled them down and made like a throwaway game. This is like a completely fresh new game. Uh, obviously, there's some conceits to making a game on a handheld system, but in the case of Liberation, they're really pushing what the Vita's capable of. I think this is eh, this is easily the best looking Vita game we have so far. Uh, it's actually running the same engine as Assassin's Creed 3. Uh, it, combat in Liberation feels familiar enough, but um, Avalon and Connor are entirely different. Aveline has her own set of weapons. She's got a blow dart gun, a whip, and even a parasol gun, which That's I haven't actually cool. seen in action. It's like a little, little cute umbrella that she can shoot people with. And then bam! Exactly. Bam. Shooting. Um, there's also, the, you know, the, the combat, which we see here. She's got like a, um, a sugar cane machete instead of a tomahawk. Um, 
the combat on Liberation uh, didn't feel quite as good as it does with a controller, but that's mostly because of the smaller buttons and sticks, but that's the kind of thing you kind of get used to. The visuals, however, are incredible and the free running feels great. Uh, there's a whole element of deception and you get three different costumes, sort of different personas you have. So Aveline can switch from sort of uh, assassin outfit to uh, slave outfit to um, debutante outfit and kind of go Sexy back and forth. slave outfit? No, not really. Okay. No, that's awful. Well, no. they exist. Terrible. Can't ignore um, history. But each of these different personas will actually get uh, separate uh, separate notoriety notoriety levels. So you kind of have to you know keep an eye on on who's who's in trouble the most. Uh, obviously, with the Vita, we're afraid of horrible gimmicky touch based controls or just like silly stuff like that. Uh, Liberation didn't beat me over the head with any of those when I was playing. You can use the touch screen for map navigation and for selecting weapons, like we just saw on the screen there. Uh, and apparently, if you tap the rear screen, you can pickpocket people, which I thought was rather oh. clever. We've got all of Assassin's Creed. Three videos over on Rev3 Games right now in one nice handy playlist. We'll try and add that in an annotation for you, and I would recommend very much checking it out because I talked to lots of nice people about these games. Mm -hmm. They have the powdered wigs and yep. the raccoons and things. I'm excited for it. Speaking of uh, video games, why don't we thank our sponsor? I like that idea. Max and I may talk about video games for a living, but believe it or not, we have lives outside of gamings. Ones that inevitably include lots of junk food and television, or in your case, movies. You like the movies. See, that's the beauty of Netflix. You can use devices you already own, like your gaming console, phone, tablet, home computer, whatever, to stream unlimited shows and movies anywhere in your house. Well, anywhere with internet access. Better yet, Netflix is offering all Destructoid viewers their own 15-day free trial. Just head over to netflix.com slash destructoid and sign up now. And remember, Netflix is also available in the UK and Ireland, so you guys over there can get in on this deal as well. Just visit netflix.co.uk slash destructoid if you're in the UK, or netflix.ie slash destructoid for those, for those of you in Ireland. It's wonderful. It does. It supports our show, too. It does. Everything is on the internet these days. You can watch TV and movies. You can order a pizza. Oh. You can see pictures of cats and naked ladies. Well, jeepers, if only somebody would put the video games on the internet, too. Uh. Oh, wait, they have that. And now Sony has that, too. Um, Sony's got some good news for people who hate physical media and or like watching things download gradually. PSN, uh, PSN Day One Digital will allow users to download digital versions of big games the same day that they're available at retail. This is going to be starting on October 2nd with Resident Evil 6 and NBA 2K13. That doesn't sound right. I think they should have stopped at 12. Um, this continues through October uh, with the following games being released the same day as their physical counterparts. You've got Dishonored, Doom 3 BFG Edition, 007 Legends, Medal of Honor Warfighter, Need for Speed Most Wanted, and Assassin's Creed 3. That's a lot of games. Yeah. Now, in spite of these being digital versions, they are uh, exactly the same price as retail. PlayStation Plus members will get PlayStation Plus, not plush. If you're a stuffed animal, don't don't do the PlayStation. Uh, get 10% off if they pre-order, and you know, six bucks off a $60 game is really not a whole lot to write home about. However. You don't have to ride home, because you'll be home. You don't have to go to the store, which I guess is cool. But And that's also because you're downloading things. It's probably better for the environment. Yeah. Because there's no plastic things. That's no right. No go wrap. planet Earth. Yeah. Speaking of the downloads, did you know that you can get the video games on your cellular telephone? It's true. Actually, uh, Ubisoft just released their first made-for-mobile Rayman game last week. Yeah, I love Rayman, you guys. It's called Rayman Jungle Run, and it's a runner game set in the Rayman world. Um, it's amazing. I'm so in love with it. I reviewed the game over on App Judgment, which is another fine Revision 3 program featuring a redhead, much like myself. If you guys care to watch my review, you can find that over on youtube.com slash app judgment. Uh, the game is $2.99 on iOS. It's going to be out on Android tomorrow or tonight, depending on where you live, at 1 a.m. Pacific time. And it's honestly one of the best mobile games that I've played this year, so really, just, just go buy it. It's awesome. And that about brings today's episode to a close. Yeah. I'd say if you like us and if you like Twitter, then you should go follow us on Twitter. I am Tara Longest. He is Max Scoville. And uh, you should follow Detoid Show, too, since you like the show. They make us I'm say guessing, that. Yeah. But I mean, you know, it's handy if you like keeping up to date with the things that we do. Look at the little robot. He's got brownies. Speaking of the show, we're going to be back here on Friday for another live show that's kicking off at 3.30 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time right here on YouTube.com slash Detoid. If you visit that page at 3.30 and we're not here, don't panic. We're probably running late. It takes me like an hour to do my hair. It's true. I have true. to watch like two whole episodes of Dragon Ball Z to get it to look like this. And, and then uh, the bathroom smells all fun. Yeah, it's weird. Anyway, see you guys on see Friday. You then.